At 1881 Las Luna Street, the sounds got louder and the hours spent playing grew longer. It was clear that playing guitar was becoming far more to Edward Van Halen than simply a hobby. Guitar really means a lot more to me than an instrument. It's part of me, period. Playing guitar always helped me through emotional, bummed out times. I just looked at it and I said, this piece of wood could never hurt me. At a time in his youth where he didn't quite fit in and nothing seemed certain, Music became an escape, a companion, and a way of life. Well, I was too small to play football. <laughs> Junior high, I was on, on football team, and uh, I already played guitar, that's why I quit the football team. I started playing because I was just your typical insecure person, being jerked around by girlfriends or people at school, this and that. It sounds stupid. I felt lonely, so I started playing guitar. I just kind of fell into it. I didn't know what else to do except play guitar. Although his increasing devotion to this new musical outlet was clear, it wasn't met with unanimous support. The whole time I was growing up, whenever I didn't practice piano, or when I started playing guitar, my mom used to call me a nothing nut, just like your father. When you grow up that way, uh, it's not conducive for self-esteem. Despite this lack of approval from one member of the family, Edward's musical expression was still largely confined to the house and garage and developed alongside the person with whom he would play for life. When I first learned to play guitar, it would just be Alex and me. I depend on Alex, I really do. Sounds hokey, but I, I, I love him so much. Even if he wasn't my brother, he would be my best friend. I can't play with another drummer, to tell you the truth. I really can't. We're definitely connected. Soon, the brothers would begin to play in front of audiences and earn their first paychecks as professional musicians. But for now, their musical endeavors remained a family affair. As we grew a little bit older, then we started to play with my dad's band. We'd play at country clubs and then uh, at a place called the Alpine House in San Fernando. We'd wear the later hosen. Everything from oompa music to waltzes to, uh, you know, weddings, bar mitzvahs, you name it. So Ed and I started to play, and my dad says, hey, I think I should pass the hat. So we're done playing, and the money is counted, $22. Then my dad gives Ed five bucks, and he gives me five bucks. And I'm looking at Ed and going, where's the rest of the money? So we're looking at my dad, and he says, welcome to the music business. <laughs> Around this time, one particular incident set in motion a habit that would plague Edward in the decades that followed. Before long, playing music and drinking alcohol would become intertwined. I started drinking when I was 12. My dad gave me a shot of vodka and a cigarette after a German Shepherd bit me. And I started drinking and smoking all in one day right then and there. I also drank every time we played with my dad's band to calm my nerves. I get real nervous playing in front of people and, and it was like a miracle drug. Though he sought help to perform in public, Edward's skills were rapidly improving and one guitarist in particular stood out from others as an influence. Eric Clapton is the only guitarist that I ever caught licks from. I learned everything like note for note. <laughs> Lohan, man, he was great. But emulating Clapton's style could only take him so far. Edward still needed the right tools to reach the heights he desired. First, his father Jan helped him buy a gold top Gibson Les Paul on credit, followed by a discovery that would stay with him until the end. I used to work at a music store delivering pianos and organs, and one day a Marshall amp comes in. Only Eric Clapton, God's play these. I said, I gotta have that amp. And I ended up using that same one on our first six records. Now armed with a professional level setup, Edward soon looked to forge his own path. Moving away from his early influences and firmly avoiding established style and theory. After Cream, I basically stopped listening to music altogether. I didn't listen to much of anything. Anything that someone wrote that's supposed to set some kind of, this is the way you're supposed to do it makes me gag. I wouldn't do the, the weird stuff I do on guitar if I took lessons. Instead of reading a book, I wrote my own, so to speak. Mm -hmm. 